in the pale halls on the BBC. Uh, this uh, started on Sunday night, and Matt is going to walk us through the basics of the pale horse. If if you wouldn't mind, I'm, I'm no, I've noticed Michael was on last when we did another Agatha I, Christie. It's coincidental that you happen to be back in Podcastville I'm, when another I'm the uh... Agatha Christie expert who doesn't like yeah. Agatha Christie. <laughs> Always well, this, good to have one of them on the back burner. didn't have as much of a sort of Agatha Christie feel to it, I don't think. It wasn't it's... people in a room saying you did no. it. No, it, know, it had a bit more of a sort of... Any, anyway, you wanted the basic building block. If so you wouldn't got... mind, Matt, do what I uh, ask. Rufus Saul in this, he plays Mark Easterbrook. We see him at the beginning of this. He's getting married to a character played by Georgine Campbell. Uh, she dies quite tragically. He doesn't take long to move on because a year later he's married again uh, to a character called Hermia, played by I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, well, that's why <laughs> I want you to do the set. Kaya Scolidario, her off of skins. He's also managed somehow to fit in a mistress as well, a showgirl I think, or a hostess. I imagine uh, his timetable's pretty tight though. Do we find out what he does? Well, he's just busy with all these ladies. It, he, he's a businessman. <laughs> he's a man about he's town. Yeah. And she dies early on while he's with her. We also see this older lady called Jessie who passes away uh, before she dies. She writes down a list of names, which includes... I should his... say, Matt didn't mean that she passes away before she dies. She passes away, but before she comma. dies... I've got a comma yeah. in there. <laughs> I didn't hear comma the comma. before she dies... <laughs> She yeah, writes a list coma. of names <laughs> that, are, now, that, are fi- that are found in he- her shoe by a detective played by Sean Pertwee, who questions uh, Mark about this, and he doesn't know Jesse at all. There's also her employer played by um, Bertie Carville, who is in a lot at the moment. We saw him last week in Baghdad Central. And it was all linked to this town called Much Deeping, this little village with sort of Wicker Man vibes. There's a a trio of female characters who are believed to have an element of witchcraft about them. Mark and his wife go to this uh, bizarre sort of festival and they meet a mysterious character played by uh, James Fleet. And as the episode goes on, the people on uh, the list, Jesse's list, seem to be dying in quite quick succession, seemingly by natural causes. But is there something more sinister? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, I want to watch <laughs> this. Um, <laughs> so, Michael, you're not you're the resident Agatha Christie fan who doesn't like Agatha, Agatha Christie. I apparently can't even say it that well. What did you think? Well, it's like I'm forced with Agatha, Agatha Christie because every time I go to Torquay, they will bash you around the head with the fact that she was born there. Literally, literally every sign, every t- every road you go on, Agatha Christie was born here. The home of Agatha Christie. You go there quite a lot. She be, yeah, must go quite a lot for that yeah. to be the problem. It's because I love Agatha Christie so much. <laughs> okay. I actually did like this because, as Matt says, it did have a different feel to it. It wasn't just a, you know, get a gathering everyone in a room. This is how I imagine yeah. Agatha Christie. Yeah, you know, you did it there, and everyone sh- pulls a shocked face and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there was a real sense of place to it. Very early on, it, you were in that world, and with the sense of direction, cin- cinematography was brilliant. I thought, and the the slow, even though it was slow paced to it, it had enough intrigue throughout it to keep me going and and interested. Definitely. So, will will you watch the second half then? How many episodes is there? Two. There's there's, there's only two. There's um, only yeah, two. no, I'll definitely I'll definitely watch the second one. Definitely. It's written by Sarah Phelps, who I have a soft spot for anyway because I think that she's hilarious. Firstly, well, she um, is brilliant. Yes. And she's written an episode of one of my favourite TV shows, so it's I will, I will always have a bit of soft spot. I loved, and then there were none a few years ago, but some of her Which adaptations is- have been a bit not for me i would agree with everything you're saying apart from the talky thing because i've not been there so you could be <laughs> lying to me i found it easy to watch it was a quick hour but of the christie adaptations that sarah phelps has done it's my least favorite just because i found rufus hall rufus saul sorry quite irritating i didn't really like him as the focus and the lead but you seem very understated mi- yes the central mystery of why of the connection between all these different people that seemed completely arbitrary and why they were all dying. I like that 
as a theme. I've never liked in these mystery thrillers the witchcrafty elements and the Wicker Man stuff. It always feels a little bit overdone in these things and that was another thing I didn't like. But because it's two and because Sarah has such a, a way with, with dialogue and is, does very atmospheric pieces, I'm absolutely on board for this. I would put it sort of in the middle of the Christie adaptation she's done, as as Michael said, I think, and then there were none was the, That's the sort pinnacle. of the crowning achievement. Yeah. And um, Ordeal by Innocence I really liked as well. Yeah. I think where this differs is, you know, it doesn't have that Christie feel because it's not sort of every 20 minutes or so someone else will turn up murdered the majority of the deaths are happening off screen you see them in like the obituary column one of my main issues with it was that the first 10 minutes there was a lot of information to take mm. in all at once it's, like, with yeah. information, it's it? like oh georgina campbell's dead and now the jesse's dead oh and now his mistress is dead and yeah. it was only when that first interaction between uh, Rufus Sewell and um, Sean Pertwee, it slowed down to an extent. The Rufus Sewell character, I quite liked. It reminded me of something like a character from a Hitchcock film, like um, North by Northwest. It put me in mind of Cary Grant's character in that. You know, this this man, who, you know, come into this world that he doesn't really understand. You know, we see a little bit of an interaction early on with the Georgina Campbell character going to uh, the, the little village village to see these three women and we obviously get the payoff there it does feel a little bit rushed and i wonder if it was originally meant to be more than two episodes you know it feels like the sort of thing that they would put over a bank holiday weekend or something like that so i don't know if it was it was originally intended to be on maybe over christmas or something usually uh, these are bank holiday christmas yeah well. yeah because i think ordeal by innocence was april bank holiday wasn't it i think it was on yeah. sort of easter time the others have all been on over christmas but no i like this i i, I think Rufus saw, you know, he was the lead character, but I think it had a decent um, ensemble. I would have liked more of Sean Poe's twee. I think, you know, sort of putting the detective on the back burner was a good idea again, because mm. having a little sort of read around what the book was about in the book, it's a different detective. It's a female detective, apparently, who's linked to sort of the, po the Poirot world. I liked Bertie Carvel in this. If he was playing against type a little bit, you know, this sort of bookish shopkeeper type you know i didn't recognize him at first so i thought that was a good uh, a good role there one thing i would criticize i think was the music it was very leading your emotions almost wasn't it here's another sort of revelation let's play the shocking music or you know i i, I mm. felt it was a bit overpowering at times i'm obviously yeah. easily led <laughs> hey, so you didn't pick up on that you are but, yeah no oh, i, I would I would agree with both of you that Sarah Felt is very good at adapting these stories for a TV audience and not making you sort of second guess everything, sort of just getting you to sort of go, come with me sort of thing on this journey, because it did well, take she, some twists and turns. She says herself she's not a Christie fan, so maybe that's why us sort of non-Christie fans do find these more enjoyable than, say, we would if... If they'd done Miss Marple, I have no interest in at all. But these are always, they're always atmospheric, they're always gritty, they're always bloodthirsty, and I do look forward to them. It is worth your time, it's called, oh my god. Pale Horse. <laughs> <laughs> which, that's which is, that's oh, never oh, happened oh, before. In, in the context of this is the name of the pub, is it, in the little village? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe that's never happened to me before. The Pale Horse, Sunday at nine on BBC One. So yeah, actually, we've converted Michael back to Christie. You'll have to go back to Torquay and pay your respects now. I will. Uh, yeah. Do homage.